Hi, this is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander teacher in Omaha, Nebraska, and my guest, who's sitting in a chair today, away from the far camera, away, <laughs> far away, is Imogen Ragone, an Alexander technique teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. And we're gonna. This is gonna be part two of a, of a, an interview we did video, and it's also gonna be a, a podcast uh, dealing with. A, sit to stand and stand to sit, kind of classic Alexander technique procedures, I guess you could call them. And we're going to, I want to kind of take it uh, to a different level than we did before. Earlier, we talked about going, say, from sitting to standing to not, to pausing a little bit before you got to complete right. standing and using a direction like I'm free or I'm not I'm not not compressing myself or something like that in order to prevent what often is a little extra something when you arrive at standing and on the way down to sitting also using an Alexander direction particularly when you're getting very close to the chair, you can maybe begin to feel the chair and you want to avoid that kind of sitting twice that often happens. People will sit and then they will collapse into, into themselves. As so, yeah, that's a very common <laughs> pattern. And as I said in the last time, if you want to see examples of this and you want to, and you live in a big city, just get on, hop on the subway or a bus and you will see it everywhere, uh, both those patterns, the extra stuff at the end of the line. Um, I'd like to do an experiment that adds to that, something that Alexander himself talked about in his book, Use of the Self. Okay. Um, you'll recall his, some of his experiments that he talks about where he, for example, he's sitting in a chair and he's thinking, well, I might stand up or I might not. I'm not going to decide any. I'm going to hold off or I think he would call it. Uh, uh, he had a phrase for that. Um, now, I won't give consent. That withhold his consent. Yeah. Something like that. And the idea was to get away from the problem of I'm sitting in a chair and I'm going to stand up and I'm already engaging some muscles that are going to be part of that standing up. He wanted to prevent as far as he could prevent that because it was just getting in the way. It was, it was, it was, he, people were kind of pre-planning the future when really he wanted them to be in the moment. Okay. So, if you would sit sideways to the chair, or actually, I think, yeah, that would then be good. Then we start sitting. Yeah, we could start like that. And if you would just stand up from the chair. Without any You don't need any direction. You, you just do it any old way for now. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you caught yourself doing something, right? A little add-on that first mm -hmm. time. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, so. Now, here's what I would like you to do. I'd like you to uh, begin the process of sitting, but only get approximately halfway there. Okay. Now that, it looks a lot like what Alexander teachers sometimes call the monkey position, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you position can- Position of mechanical advantage. Position of mechanical mm -hmm. advantage. And one way of, yes, right. And it's very useful for certain things, but we're, not, we're gonna use it in a slightly different context here. Because if you think about it, at where you are- How right, long am I gonna be? Oh, not long, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep this short. But you, at where you are right now, you could decide and go ahead and do it to bring yourself back to standing. Yeah, and then go back into, monkey if I guess we'll just call it monkey and now you could decide to sit right 
So either one, you have, there's two, there's those two, or of course you could just stay in monkeys. So you have three choices really. And if, and the idea here is that if you're in that position of mechanical advantage where you could, you could just go back to standing or you could go down, you could sit and you don't make a decision which one you're gonna do until the very last moment. And the okay. best, uh, best way to do that, I think, is to use a direction like, I, I would tend to use the direction I'm not doing. Or, okay. um, so again, if you would, you could just- I go halfway again. You could go halfway just from sitting. So there you are. You could sit, you could stand. If, um, if you use the direction, I'm not, yeah. Or did you, you want me to actually do something or did you in want me a, to well you would just jumped ahead a little bit but go okay. back to the position of mechanical advantage and then use a direction like whatever i decide you know what you just know ahead of time whatever i end up deciding to do i'm going to use the direction i'm not doing and yeah or go back into the position of mechanical advantage again. I'm not doing as I bring myself to sitting. Yeah. And in fact- see, see, that was a little different because it was decided for me that I was gonna sit. Yes, and it would be, it, if you, you could just do this yourself and make your own decision yeah. if and what, what you're gonna do. Because the first, the time before, you I didn't decide. know which I was going to do and then I just stood up again. Right. Um, and yeah. But, it, anyway, but if, just... you, if, you, if you go back into that position of mechanical advantage and just decide, you're, you're going to use the direction I'm not doing. And then at some point, take that direction wherever you want, to the chair or to standing or to just remaining. Or that, you could even walk around the room in, in that monkey position too. I mean, I could. You could. Um, I, I do know that, that that seemed different to me when I sat down then than the previous time when I kind of was prescribed that that was what I was going to do. Yeah. Because it, it, it that's a, it's a decision yeah, yeah. that you're the one who should yeah, be making, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think- And not making, and, uh, and not making until you make it, if you know what I mean. Right. That, you, that you're not making the decision and when you make it, you just go. Right, you you right. you're, you're, you're in the context of you're in, with you're, you're you're in this position of mechanical advantage, and you have freedom to do anything. Come out of it, sit, walk, do anything, but whatever you do, you want to continue that direction. That's well, I'm I'm choosing the one I'm not doing, but it could be I'm free or I'm not compressing myself or whatever. Um, but you're adding that element of uncertainty about what it is you're gonna do. And you're only gonna make that a decision within the framework of a direction. Yeah. I'm just noticing that the moment I hit the chair or if I have, or even just before, but I'm already thinking, where is the chair? That there's a there's a little moment of um, so, extra muscular tension that is, I would imagine, not necessary to what's going on. Um, so it and it's just so that... interesting how how this still comes up after. Years and years, <laughs> I know. Um, and that it's not to let people know that I am noticing it, and it may be visible too. And I am pretty confident it's nothing like at the same level as when I was a beginner, um, Alexander Stevens. I I think doing the, doing the sitting and the standing 
in this way as opposed one way is to go from sitting to standing standing to sitting this mm -hmm. is going from wherever you are to somewhere midway mm -hmm. and then there's the there's at least three maybe four options about what could come next and you're not going to commit to any of them but what you are going to do is think a useful direction and what I'm could easily you. happen is what just happened, you at, decided to sit and, and in that framework, you noticed a little extra stuff that maybe you would not have noticed if you had just sat in the chair, you walked over mm -hmm. to the chair and sat down. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is reminding me of um, before I trained for, to be an Alexander teacher, but I was already having lessons and I was home um, in England visiting my parents and my mum was having Alexander lessons and I went and had a lesson with her teacher there. Um, and she did a lot of chair work, but I, I don't know that I sat. I didn't know she was just taking me to different levels and I never knew. Um, I, I'm just remembering this, and I, I think she trained in the McDonald kind of line, if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. that. Whereas most of my experience at that point had been with people who are more in the Carrington sort mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of going up on the toes, like you're going here, but you like, did I ever reach the chair? It's, it's very interesting, a different way of maybe getting to something similar. Um, being in that state of not knowing, am I going here? Where am I going? And um, yeah. And just in terms of <clears throat> Alexander technique teaching technology, mm -hmm. this is very amenable to online teaching. Yeah. Whereas, because yeah. we don't have the hands that can reach out no. and guide you. But so the te that teacher you're talking about was using their, her hand, his or her hands. Yes. And I did give you a certain I... experience. But yeah. I believe that yeah. it's ultimately more powerful if you can give yourself that experience. Yeah. yeah. And that's one reason agree. why I like teaching online better than in person these days. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's a whole side trip, which we don't want to <laughs> get into right now. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 just my thought on the subject. Yeah, I've played around with that quite a bit and I've started using it in teaching and it seems like it works pretty well. Yeah. So yeah. Any, anything Thank else you, you want to say about it? No, but that's really interesting that kind of having this middle point that's again coming to deciding and not knowing wh where you're going to go and then mm -hmm. making a choice from there. So it's like renewing the choice. Um, I mean, you could have many points if you wanted to. Sure. Um, and the, at each one that you don't know that maybe you're going to stand up again or maybe you're going to go a bit lower or maybe, you know, Whatever. And, anyway, it's you know, ultimately, you could take this into any other activity, because at any point, any time in your life, mm -hmm. there are a myriad of choices you could make about what's going to happen next. Yeah. And this, this just kind of, I think, brings that into a sharper relief, maybe. So people... You, I think once you learn, once you play with something like this, then suddenly you realize, oh, I could be lying in bed and I got all kinds of choices I could get. Mm -hmm. I could roll over or I could push up or I could just stay here or, you know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many choices. And if I use, if I bring to bear an Alexander direction and don't commit to the choice, until I really, you know, I got that direction. Now I could, within the framework of that direction, I can then make a decision. Instead of yeah. making a decision, which is very likely to just have you do whatever you've decided to do in the way you habitually do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's all I got for this. All right. Thank you. Thank you for this.
Thank you so much. My guest has been Imogen Ragone, an Alexander teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. I will put a link to our earlier interview on Sit to Stand because it, it in a way kind of follows from it. So thank you. Thank you.